sa ating lahat. Uh, tayo ay nasa chapter 5 na ng uh, Book of Micah. Tayo nag-move at ating titingnan ang sinasabi sa atin based sa ating scripture reading patungkol sa nakita ni Micah uh, sa future. Ang first four chapters ng book ay nagpakita sa atin kung Paano nakita ni Micah ang magiging itsura ng Israel at ng Judah? Ang dalawang kingdoms na nahati dahil sa kasamaan, kasalanan na naipakita ng mga tao after ng uh, napaka-dilim na nangyari sa lugar na yon na pinamumunuan under the monarchy of King Solomon. At hindi ko na uulitin kung ano ang nangyari sapagat more or less may idea tayo kung ano ang naging punishment sa Israel. Ito to ay nangyari under the hands of the Assyrians. Kung ano ang nangyari sa uh, Judah in the hands of the Babylonian. At atin ding natunghayan kung bakit ganun na lamang ang galit ng Panginoon kaya ipinakita ng Panginoon kay Micah kung ano ang mangyayari at bakit niya gagawin yon In the third chapter, at ito ay aking na i-share sa inyo, ang mga priests ay very corrupt. Sila ay nag-handle ng spiritual matters because of money. At ang mga prophets ay likewise very corrupt. Hindi na makatotohan ang pananalita ng Panginoon ang kanilang isinishare sa mga tao. Gumagawa sila ng sarili nilang mga prophecies and people were deceived. At ito ay ginagawa nila likewise for money. At ang land barons and ang princes ay very corrupt. Ang mga ancient landmarks ay binabago dahil sila ay sakim. Gusto nila makuha pa ang mga properties, ang lupain ng mga tao, mga innocent people. At ito ay nagpapakita ng greed sa puso ng mga land barons and those who are leading the nation of the land, ang mga princes. Ito ang naging itsura ng mukha ng lupa iyon na yon, na minahal ng Panginoon, munit na maging matigas ang mga puso nila sapagkat ang iniisip nila, kami ay very proud people sapagkat kami ang pinili. Kami ang sinasabi na people of the book, the chosen people. At walang question doon, ito ay nakalathala sa salita ng Panginoon. Kaming Israel ang pinuli ng Panginoon, kaya kami ay may templo at sa gitna ng templong ito ay pinakikita ni God ang kanyang presensya. At ang mga hintil ay bawal na wala sa amin, wala silang lugar sa temple at kung kami ay makakasama ng mga hintil, kung mahawakan namin sila, kami ay magiging unclean. Ganon ang pagtingin nila sa kanilang mga sarili. Napakataas at napakababa ng tingin sa mga hintil. In the book of Micah, chapter 5, if you will please open the Bible, your Bible with me. In the dark chapters of the book, kung ating hihimayin, uh, likewise from the other books in the Old Testament scriptures, kung gaano kahirap ang pinagdaanan ng mga tao ito, ay masasabi natin na hindi Ganun kasimple ang binigay na punishment ng Panginoon. Wala silang makain, walang tubig. Ang nai-share ko sa inyo, as recorded in the, the Old Testament Scripture, sila ay naging cannibals. Ito ay pinabayaan ng Panginoon na sila ay bumaba na ganun kababang klase ng mga tao, kaya sila ay umabot sa ganun. Kinakain ng anak, kinakain ng magulang. It was deep famine that the Lord allowed to happen in the whole land because people were simply disobedient. People were ignoring God and everyone was doing things in according to His sight. Wala na, kanya-kanya ng gawaan. Ang feeling nila, sila ay godly, 
Pero deep inside, ang bawat puso ng tao ay kanya-kanyang gawa na baliwala na ang ating Panginoon. And then all of a sudden, pagpasok sa chapter 5, chapter ay biglang nagpakita si God through Micah ng isang napakagandang future. Isang hope sa kalagitnaan ng darkness ay biglang lumutang ang isang hope na nagsasabi na magkakaroon ng peace, magkakaroon ng freedom, magkakaroon ng redemption, magkakaroon ng restoration. But if you were there in that situation na alam mong ito ang mangyayari, paano mangyayari yung peace na nakikita ni Micah? Paano mangyayari yung restoration na yon? Paano mangyayari yung freedom na yon? Paano mangyayari na ang mountain of the Lord and Jerusalem ay magiging matingkad na mountain muli? But then, the Lord allowed Prophet Micah to see a beautiful future ahead of the land and ahead of the Gentiles. So, tignan natin ang chapter 5, verse 2. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from of old, from everlasting. Dalawa ang Bethlehem doon sa lugar na yon. Isa yung nasa northern part ng Israel, sa Zebulun, sa tribe ni Zebulun. Ito ay nasa lugar ng Galilee. At ang nakita ni Micah ay ang Bethlehem na nasa Judah. Bethlehem Eprata. Ito ay very specific na lugar in the land of Judah along the Judean hills. At ito ay about 10 kilometers away from Jerusalem. And according, and, and according to uh, Micah chapter 5 verse 2, ito ay isa sa mga maraming lugar sa Judah. Pero ang Bethlehem e Prata sa nakita ni Micah at alam niya na ito ang katayuan, probably it was shocking na why Bethlehem e Prata? Of all the wonderful places, of all the beautiful places, of all the significant places, Along Judah, in the landscape of Judah, bakit Bethlehem e Prata ang pinili? Ang Bethlehem ay ito ang naging birthplace ni Boaz. Ito ang naging asawa ni Ruth. At sila ay nagkaanak. Ang anak nila ay si Obed. At si Obed ay nagkaanak. Ang anak ni Obed ay si Jesse. At si Jesse, ang naging anak ay si David. And along the line of David, David dun sa tribe ng Judah, ay lumabas si Joseph at lumabas ang ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Kaya in the book of Hebrews, very specific na isunulat doon, from the tribe of Judah, from the single dynasty, the Davidic covenant, the Davidic dynasty, doon lalabas ang promise na Messiah. Ito ang mga biblical characters na ipinanganak sa Bethlehem. At si Rachel ay inilibing ni, uh, nakalibing siya doon sa Bethlehem. So regardless, ay hindi pa rin siya significant na lugar. Kaya tinawag na Eprata, ito ang tawag during the time of Jacob, Bethlehem Eprata. At ito ay insignificant, rustic, provincial, agricultural land. Probably not significant militarily, probably not significant politically, likely hindi rin significant economically, and likely hindi rin significant spiritually sapagkat ang lapit ng Jerusalem. At lahat ng mga Israelites, lahat ng mga Jews ay nakatutok lamang ang kanilang heart, ang kanilang ang mind to no other places than Jerusalem. 
So the reason na ang temple na nakatayo doon sa Jerusalem ang pinaka-central element ng religion of Judaism. Kaya walang ibang lugar. Lahat sila ay nakatuon lamang doon sa Jerusalem. Dahil naandun ang templo. But Bethlehem, Eprata, that is nothing. Kaya ito ang sinabi sa atin ni Micah. Though you are little among the thousands of Judah, Miski ikaw ay napaka-significant amongst the thousands of Judah. Iyon ang katayuan ng Bethlehem Eprata. Ngunit ito ay object ng prophecy ni God through Micah. Very specific ang prophecy ni Micah. Unlike the sorcerers, unlike the, the, the magicians, unlike the fortune tellers na ating napapakinggan, very vague, very general lamang ang sasabihin. But think about it. Bakit nakita ni Micah yan? It was because that was God working in the life of Micah. Very specific in Bethlehem. Bakit hindi sa Samaria? Bakit hindi sa Galilee? Bakit hindi sa Nazareth? Bakit hindi in Gaza? Bakit hindi somewhere else? Very specific in Bethlehem. So something happened there. Or according to Micah, may something na mangyayaring malaki doon na nagbibigay ng liwanag na kagandahan sa kalagitnaan ng darkness na nag envelope dun sa whole land of Israel and Judah. At ang story ay about a son. Ito ay story ng isang ipapanganak na bata. Ito ay nakita ni Isaiah. In chapter 9, uh, verse 6, ng book of Isaiah, ipinakita ni God through Isaiah ang identity, ang authority, at ang nature nung batang nakita ni Micah na ipapanganak. Hindi alam ni Isaiah kung saan exactly ipapanganak. Micah knew exactly kung saan ipapanganak. In general, Alam din ni Micah kung sino yung ipapanganak, but Isaiah saw a very clear definition, identity, authority, and statute of that son na ipapanganak in Bethlehem, Eprata. Kaya in chapter 9, verse 6 ng Isaiah, describe ni Isaiah, sabi niya, Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, at ito daw ang mag establish ng Kingdom ni David and Throne of David forever. Iyon ang napakandang pinakita kay Isaiah. But then, he did not stop there. Nakita na Isaiah kung ano ang mangyayari doon sa sun na ipapanganak. At ito naman na naka-record sa Isaiah chapter 53. Alam nating lahat yun na idinitalye ng Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng pagkita ni Isaiah kung ano ang mangyayari kay Jesus Christ doon sa cross. And he's, he was wounded because of our transgression. And in verse 8, in chapter 53, ang sinabi dyan, He was cut off from the land of the living. Kita ang kita ni Isaiah. If you want to see a presentation a detailed description kung ano ang sufferings na pinagdaanan ng ating Panginoon ng anak na yon na pinanganak sa Bethlehem. Kung gusto natin makita kung paano ang pinagdaanan ng hirap niya, well, you can watch uh, The Passion of Christ at doon ay kahit paano na-visualize natin Kung paano ang punishment na pinagdaanan ng Panginoon, ang suffering na pinagdaanan ng ating Panginoon, the hands of both the Romans and the Jews. At habang pinapanood natin, tayo ay nanghingiwe, hindi tayo makatingin sapagkat nararamdaman natin na kikita natin ang suffering na pinagdaanan ng ating Panginoon. And Isaiah chapter 53 puts a very clear illustration kung ano ang pinagdaanan ng ating Panginoon. 
He was cut off from the land of the living. That son that Micah saw, na ipapanganak in Bethlehem e Prata, nakita ni Isaiah na siya, ang counselor, wonderful, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. At siya ang mag establish ng permanent throne ni David, na kung saan ang Messiah ay lalabas from that Davidic dynasty, that Davidic covenant. And Isaiah saw kung paano ito ay na-fulfill. When the Lord Jesus Christ was finally crucified on the cross, but He resurrected from the dead. And then Micah talks about a beautiful future. He is saying a kind of peace that really matters. It is a kind of peace na hindi yung normally ay naunawa ng mga tao na kapag nag-aaway ang dalawang kingdoms and then magkakaroon ng peace, ito ay mag ng war. Pero ang nakikita ni Micah, nakita ni Isaiah, nakita ni Jeremiah, ni Hosea, Zechariah, and many other prophets in the Old Testament ay ibang peace. A kind of peace that matters in the life of anyone who is seeking God. It is a kind of peace that hindi ma-achieve, hindi mangyayari without the Son. Hindi pala makatotohanan ang peace na katotohanan mararamdaman ng isang puso na permanent peace kung hindi mangyayari yung nakita ni Micah at ni Isaiah at hindi mangyayari yung nakita ni Isaiah in chapter 53. So this is the kind of peace that matters to you and I. It is a peace that this world cannot understand. It is a peace that this world is unable to fathom, to measure, to determine. Bakit itong taong ito hindi naman mayabong ang pamumuhay, itong taong ito na mukhang punong-puno ng problema ang kanyang buhay, and yet I can still see him or her is smiling, and I can sense that there is an inner peace that I cannot understand. That is the peace that matters. That is the peace that Micah is saying, this is the future. And it is going to happen because a son would be born in Bethlehem, Eprata. The first piece is between the Jews and the Gentiles. Napakababa ng tingin ng mga Jews sa ating mga Gentiles. Talagang tayo ay pinandidirihan tayo ay source na uncleanness. Kaya miski sa loob ng temple ay meron lang exclusive na lugar na hanggang doon lamang ang mga Gentiles. Hindi sila pwedeng lumampas doon. Napaka baba ng tingin. At hindi tayo nagtataka sapagkat ang mga Gentiles ay hindi kilala ang Diyos. Ang wino-worship ng mga Gentiles ay mga Diyos Diyosan. Sila ay mga pagano. Tayo ay naging mga pagano once in our lives. We thought we were believers of God. We thought we were so close to God. But in reality, before we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, we were no different from the Gentiles. Nung kapanahon na na ito. We were no different from them. We were separated from God, so far away from God. And yet we thought we were Christians. But we were not. The Lord Jesus Christ said it himself in John chapter 8, 44. You are of your father the devil. Every one of us belonged to the devil before we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a spiritual fact. It is a biblical fact. But then, 
Kita ni Micah, magkakaroon ng peace between the Jews and the Gentiles. In Ephesians chapter, in Ephesians chapter 2, tingnan natin ang ating mga Biblia at ating alamin kung ano ang katayuan natin bago tayo naging mga Kristiyano. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 13, ito ang sinasabi sa atin ni Paolo. Listen to me. Ito ang description ng bawat isa sa atin bago tayo naging Kristiyano. These verses are verses for every one of us because these verses picture, present, kung sino tayo before we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And let's read it. Sabi ni Paul, Ephesians 2, 11, Therefore remember that you, you and I, ikaw ito aling Mary, ikaw ito Richie, ikaw ito Lyra, ikaw ito Sean, ikaw ito Ricky, ikaw ito Pastor, ikaw ito Deacon, ikaw ito Jeff, ako ito, Sabi ni Paul, therefore remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, what a very discouraging and very sad description kung ano tayo before we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Without God, not part of the commonwealth of Israel. Strangers, aliens, Without Christ. Now, kung ganun ang katayuan natin, anong klase ang future natin? Ano ang hope? Hopeless case. That was everyone's situation before we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. But in verse 14, this is the peace. For He Himself is our peace, who has made both one, the Gentiles and Israel. Both one, the Gentiles and the Jews. And has broken down the middle wall of separation. That is the beauty of the cross. Whereas before, one on peace between the Jews and the Gentiles, and now because of the Lord Jesus Christ, they destroy the wall that separated the Jews from the Gentiles, and they have become one in God. No more distinction. And in chapter 1 of the book of Ephesians, the same book, verse 10, I love this verse so much. That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. In the fullness of times, Micah saw that fullness of time happening. And I say as so, the fullness of another part of that cool time, and it refer, the son was born. Kaya natin sinaselebrate ang Christmas season. The son was born. If the son was not born, there was no Christ to die on the cross of Calvary. In the fullness of God's time, the completeness of the redemptive story, the, full, fill, the fulfillment of that story of grace, a son was born, and that son grew, and that became a man to be crucified. And Paul says it, 
for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God so in God's fullness of times the peace has finally settled so that there is no more distinction between Jews and the Gentiles if both have faith in Christ. And finally, there is now peace between God and man. So first, peace Real peace, the peace that matters, a peace between the Jews and the Gentiles. And now there is another peace that matters. It is the peace between God and man. Sabi sa verse 4 ng Micah chapter 5, And he shall stand and feed his flock, in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall abide, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. The greatness of God is no longer limited to the Jews. The grace of God is no longer limited to that landscape. It has extended beyond that landscape, reaching to the farthest parts of the earth. Because peace between God and man finally materialized, finally happened in the cross of Calvary. At itong peace na ito, ang, ang kabuuan ng story from the sun hanggang sa Micah, Isaiah, hanggang Micah chapter 53, ito yung the story that gave excitement to Many biblical characters in the New Testament, kung ating pinag-aaralan ng Micah, ang, ang, ang Book of Acts ay nakita, and the Gospel, syempre marami tayo makikita mga biblical characters na naintindihan natin kung bakit ganun na lang ang kanilang naging dedication, ang obedience, ang kanilang zeal to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Alam natin ang story ni Stephen. Kung ano ang naging excitement ni Zacharias, si Zacchaeo, si Paul, si Barnabas, Apollos, the blind man, the lame man, Tabitha, and many other characters na nakasulat doon sa scripture na ngayon ay naintindihan natin kung bakit ganun ang naging response nila because they saw the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ. In Zechariah chapter 9, 9 to 10, ito ay book bago mag Malachi. Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 to 10. Ito ang nakita ni Zechariah na mangyayari doon sa pagdating ng ating Panginoon. Ito ang pag Pasok ng ating Panginoon doon sa Jerusalem na kung saan ang ating Panginoon ay bilang isang Jew ay magsa-celebrate ng Passover. At ito ang nakita ni Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the fowl of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off. He shall speak peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Napakasarap naman na nakita ni Zechariah, no? At you know, hindi nakita ni Zechariah yung actual na triumphal entry ng Panginoon sa Jerusalem. Alam natin yung story yun. Nakasakay sa donkey, ang king. At siya ay pumapasok sa Jerusalem. 
At nakikita na ni Zechariah na itong napaka-humble na king na ito, na instead na siya ay in, in majesty ay pumapasok sa Jerusalem, he was riding on a humble donkey. And yet, Zechariah was so excited in, in prophesying and sharing this vision sapagkat ito ang magbibigay ng peace to all the nations. Itong humble king na ito ang magbibigay ng kanyang dominion from T.C. to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. That's because mangyayari ang peace between God and man. At walang ibang magbibigay ng peace na yon, kundi yung Son. Without the Son, as I was saying kanina, there wouldn't be peace. Lahat tayo dito, walang pag-asa. Ang peace na maunawalang mauna lang natin ay yung mga Temporal kinds of peace. The temporal kind of peace. Nagkapera ka, you experience peace. Nagkaroon ka ng maiging family, kaibigan, ang feeling mo, you have peace. Nagkaroon ka ng magandang trabaho, ang feeling mo, mayroon kang peace. Nag-excel ka sa iyong pag-aaral, sa iyong negosyo, you feel you have peace. But no! Hindi yon ang nire-refer na peace na nangangailangan ng bawat isa. Ang kailangan ng bawat isa ay ang peace that matters. The peace between God and man. That peace that can only be realized, that peace can only be acquired if one has Christ in his life. We all experience sadness in our lives. May mga moments sa tayo ay talagang dumadaan doon sa depression. Dumadaan sa kalungkutan. Who does not? May mga moments na ako ay nalulungkot din because of many things that I can see around me. Just like you. But what is important is, katulad ng kinanta ng choir kanina, We will seek Jesus Christ. We will see Him because we have the peace that matters. In Hebrews chapter 10, let me read to you verses 19 to 20, but I would like you to look at your Bible and read with me Hebrews chapter 10 verses 19 and 20. Therefore, brethren, this is a message to every one of us. Kung lahat tayong narito ay mga Kristiyano. Therefore, brethren, having a boldness to enter the holiest of the blood of Jesus Christ, to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which He concentrated for us through the veil that is His flesh. You know, I love this verses so much because we have that boldness. We can declare even now that I am going to spend eternal life in the presence of God because of Jesus Christ. It is done. It is finished. Wala na akong dapat pang idagdag. The Lord Jesus Christ finished it. And so boldly, I am claiming before this world, I belong to Jesus Christ. And no one can stop me. No one can deny me about the truth. Neither can anyone steal from me that wonderful privilege of having the right to claim before the world boldly that I belong to God. 
that I am His and He is mine. Hey, uh, you know, in, in, um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, I, I love the chapter so much as well. Uh, dahil in explain ni Paulo sa church sa Corinth, dahil nga ang problem ay katulad ng problem sa Galatians, problem sa, sa uh, Ephesians, problem sa ibang mga churches, ay maraming mga hudyo ang hindi ma-accept yung katotohanan na nakita ni Zechariah, ni Micah, ni, ni Isaiah, hindi nila ma-accept na itong si Jesus Christ ang Messiah. At, you know, as I was sharing kanina, ang central institution kasi sa mga Hudyo ay ang temple. Remove the temple, remove the sacrificial system, ay baliwala na ang Judaism. Kaya sa kanila, ganun na lamang ang kanilang a pride. Ganun sila ka-proud. Ganun katining ang kanilang paniniwala na kami lang ang may karapatan sa Diyos. At ang sinasabi ni Paulo sa mga taga-Corinthians ay, you know, ang problem ay you are resting your attention sa glory ng temple, ng law, but in actuality, yung glory na yon ay nag-fade away. Sapagat mayroong more excellent na glory. Yan ang sabi ni Paul. You are trusting yourself too much in that thing, the law, for sure, it's, it's filled with glory. But kung compare yung glory ni Moses o law, doon sa glory ng new covenant, the cross of Jesus Christ, ang sinasabi sa 2 Corinthians chapter 3, this is fading away. It will never excel the glory of the salvation that we so enjoy because of Jesus Christ. Kaya ang sinasabi niya, hindi nga makatingin ang mga Israelites sa mga Jews sa mukha ni Moses because of the glory of the face of Moses at kailangan takpan ng veil. At sinasabi ni Paul, yung glory na yon ay Nag-fade. Tingnan natin 2 Corinthians chapter 3 para matandaan ninyo ang ini-explain ni Paulo. Sabi ni Paul in verse 6, Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter or the law, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills. The law kills. Pinag-aralan natin dito sa Galatians, di ba? Na ang batas, ang law ni Moses, it kills. Why? Dahil lalo kang idinidiin na ikaw ay makasalanan, hindi mo masusunod ang 600 plus na laws. Habang tinitingnan mo siya, lalo mong nakikita kung gaano ka ka-evil in the sight of God. And therefore, the law heals. But the Spirit gives life. And then in verse 10, For even what was made glorious, yun yun, yun law, had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. And in verse 14, ito ang problem ng mga Judaizers. But their minds were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament. Because the veil is taken away in Christ. 
you know, hindi lang Jews ang veiled pa rin ang kanilang hearts and minds and thoughts. Yes, sinasabi ni Paulo hanggang ngayon, and we know that to this day, veiled ang kanilang hearts and minds because everyone believes that through the law of Moses ang kanilang salvation. But it's not only amongst the Jews right now. Oh, there are still a lot of people na ganun pa rin ang paniniwala, veiled pa rin. Hindi nila makita ang full glory of the cross. Micah chapter 5, verses 2 to 6, unveiled a beautiful truth. That the son would be born in that lowly place, in that humble and insignificant place, Bethlehem of Prata. But it did not stop there. Peace finally settled in the hearts of faithful believers in Christ. With the accomplishment of what Isaiah saw in chapter 53. And with what happened in Mount Olivet, when the apostles and the rest of the disciples and other people who were there saw the Lord ascending into heaven. And the Lord is coming back. Finally, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, This is what the Bible is saying about our relationship now with God. Now, therefore, think about it very carefully. Therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Whereas before, sinasabi sa atin, 11 to 13 of the same chapter, wala tayong God separated from Christ. Hindi tayo part ng commonwealth ng Israel. But here, finally, sinasabi, hindi na tayo strangers. Hindi na tayo foreigners but citizens together with the saints together with Abraham together with Boaz together with King David together with Solomon together with Ruth together with Jesse with Obed we are citizens of heaven just like them and finally members of the household of God Can you afford to just ignore that? I cannot. It gives me peace in moments of sadness to just think about this truth that I am not a foreigner. I am not a stranger. I belong to God. And I hope you can likewise claim this truth. Because that is the peace that matters. <laughs>